So, you, you have a data sheet here, this data, data sheet again like a PDF, you can enlarge it and all the details regarding what are the sizes seen that no? What all you can do with it are there and this is what I wanted to tell you in the earlier when it is not there. This here you can probably download a full fledged 3D model which is compatible with most Autodesk products, most uh, McNeil uh, products. Similarly, Desalt and Siemens, Solidate, Solidworks, Rhino and uh, a large number of these things understand these models. So, I do not have a very proper uh, uh, program which I can use to open it, hence I cannot open it. Now, you see here important thing about pricing, about life cycle information is also given here saying how long will they maintain it in their data sheet. I will now close here, I will see if I can go to other manufacturers. You see here we have large number of sizes, you can shop by size, then there are a lot of outdoor uh, catalogs. So, if you go for these outdoor uh, enclosures, you have I will see whether I can open one of these things and uh, see if it still works. Yeah, it is trying to download the engineering drawing. So, any detail you want is already there and then you see here while this is listed automatically here, while this listed automatically here, you still need to negotiate. Once you negotiate, you have this beautiful uh, thing here, then there are something related to the type of models you have. So, I do not know, I am not familiar with this STEP format, I expect it, it is something which uh, most 3D programs will open it automatically. It may be a little like the IGS and then you see material is given here, something equally related to is saying what are all the materials they use for the manufacturing. This is where since we are not uh, experts in metallurgy or uh, we are not experts in application of particular fabrication process with the known metallurgy, we, we can always look up their uh, thing here again. Uh, no, sorry for uh, <laughs> Uh, this thing you see here, most of the properties are given here. It is a little difficult for us to interpret this information without the proper uh, understanding about it. But you see here a lot of it now including basic yield strength, okay. then various types elongation and then very important thing here is this thermal conductivity and Q, the heat holding capacity are all mentioned here. So, if you have this, you can now select the type of material you like to use and what you want to do with it and for what is the application uh, has to be done and uh, so on. So, here basically it looks like this is an aluminum case, but has traces of the silicon and uh, I mean sorry large amount of silicon composition. So, it is a aluminum silicon uh, case which will make you make this very very suitable for our application. So, it is not for us to copy or anything, it is for us to understand how it is. So, as we go on see here beautiful these catalogs, this is where no, the word when I say standard, you see in here very very important thing is 
waterproof dust right are used to describe electrical this thing. unfortunately these terms are ambiguous if the enclosure is merely rain proof or is fully submersible similarly a set of standards the national electrical manufacturers I told you in the earlier thing NEMA gives these particular things here saying NEMA 1, 2, 3, 4 and then X and so on. A little related to this is the IP classification saying the index of protection classes meant for other type of equipment where you have a 2 and 3 number system all of us are familiar with probably the IP 55 which is commonly used and then we have IP 56, IP 66 and finally, IP 67. If you go through this in detail you will notice that it is not as simple as just are trying to buy small box you have seen this no. If I suggest you read go to their uh, this website and find out to see what is a there are IP number designations the smallest is open chassis equipment sometimes if you make a power supply and those things if you remember in the beginning I showed you one panel uh, building. So, you have panels in which these uh, equipments are all mounted the outside big enclosure is fully protected. So, in this case generally IP 20, IP 10 all these things mean that it is a box which is generally protected it is open, but it is expected to be used one more time in another equipment. So, most of the small sub assemblies and all <coughs> including that PCBs and all what you are talking about are probably taken from here. Further if you go down NEMA to this the cross verification has been given here NEMA 46 correspond to 55, 55 is not actually fully submersible equipment the only submersible equipment are probably 66P here in the IP 66 and so on. You need to take a stand on this here saying even if you are to make something a few numbers of would you like to go here or would you like to make your own enclosure. So, my own personal call in this it is better that we concentrate on the electronics and the functionality and not so much on the enclosure design. So, in this particular lecture series is how to make equipment design that is uh, packaging of electronic equipment at a system level. I feel you should study this in detail and given example is one of our students has made the traditional what do you call uh, colored fountains here it is called a musical fountain. So, need not have to go and search much for it the actual basic the fountain parts and all have been installed by somebody who is good at handling all the plumbing and uh, things, but the control the walls the whole electronics his first of samples were made using these things. Again once again that lights and all are supplied by a supplier lights have a different way of dealing with it, but you see any light obviously you have something on which you know the light comes out from then you have something for alignment. So, there is a case around it and then there is somewhere you need to give uh, power to it and then whole thing has to go and match with the fountain part of it. The lights are probably again you know done by another supplier the plumbing and thing has been done, but the full control of how to activate this various things how they are cabled some of them are directly submerged equipment just sitting under the water level in a it is not a full fledged what you call I would not call it a swimming pool, but it is a harsh environment you have large pool in which only the shower heads and the nozzles come out of the water remaining just underneath that you have all these sophisticated sealed equipment going underneath and 
what cannot be kept there it is still taken out and then kept in a mildly harsh equipment. So, if you have to have a jacuzzi in your house I do not know how they pronounce it put up with my accent I do not know whether it calls a jacuzzi or whatever it is if you have a jacuzzi at home you would not want to be electro electrocuted, but still it has so many what you call walls which you need to operate uh, there is a button uh, which you know increases or decreases the temperature and there are buttons which start the waves or the froth and then there is a button which uh, I expect it does drains and uh, I do not know what all are there. One of the first thing you will notice is it is not operated electrically the one you press there often is just a air or hydraulic hose which you is a button you press and then in the wall you have a contactor which is operated by this connecting uh, what you call inert fluid sometimes it is there sometimes it is a liquid. But what you say there are beautiful colored knobs and you know often color changing and all that No, that small part of it which is required there is generally low voltage and still has sealed various types of connectors and so on in that. The main thing which operates uh, probably requires 6 to around 10 kilowatts heaters inside and then uh, you need uh, pumps uh, which are probably of the order of 2 to 3 horsepower and then you need uh, some frothing swirlers and all that. All of it is still controlled if using the small knobs which you press which are controlled put in a panel in the wall which is controlled through pipes and through the pipes either you have a low voltage connection or you have a simple air or water connection. So, you see this NEMA rating and all that you will see that we have a very large number of data which is available then I suggest that one needs to read about the progress of how electronics enclosures came to be seen that no this is one of the pictures I was trying to show here in uh, all that you can think of somebody has thought for you and secondly while some of these items are listed in the catalog they are there in their blog and all that they may or may not be available in the quantities you want. Sometimes the minimum order quantity will run into a few hundreds and expensive. Sometimes the maximum order quantity which they commit and that smooth flow of the items in the pipeline cannot be guaranteed. If you want let us say every month you want uh, say some 2000 of them it needs negotiation somebody has to sit negotiate and see the various terms and then uh, do they expect it to stock and another ultimate thing that can happen is will it continue to be production for your product life cycle your product life cycle you may be estimating around 10 years and then they say right now we are coming out with a new series or new technique. So, we cannot guarantee if you want why do not you buy up a whatever stock you require for your next uh, few years that is where we probably need to look at can we have an alternate source of all these equipments here you see here. So, so many of these large number of you have seen this no this is of course, a small thing about uh, maybe a little bit of I want to sell a bit of making information about their products. Now, you see here we have the beauty of polycarbonate and fiberglass loosely no both fiberglass is good in its own way and then we have polycarbonate also where do we need to do what. So, polycarbonate has certain advantages one of them is tough 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 tough, but it has its own limitations meaning 
while you can injection mold it and all in some conditions it requires additional control on the thicknesses meaning from the injection point to various vent points and the way the material spreads often this injection machines use what is called a submarine gate, susmarine gate. So, in susmarine gate the material comes and comes out and then finally, when you want to take it off a small pip continues to remain and wherever the dies close we may end up with flash. So, location of the flash, location of these pips all still happen to have still controls. In contrast to this we have this fiber glass which is good anything you want can probably you can make. Hmm? So, they have given uh, all this stuff easier and so on and all that fiber glass leads to true to shape with mold variability retain rigidity and so on and so on. No? So, many other proce processes are there while we take it very easy saying uh, oh it is a matter everything is done not long ago only around uh, 50 years back if you remember all our uh, automobile bumpers were made, made with heavy metal and in fact chrome bumper for a car was you know a matter of honor saying there is so much of chrome on the car then over the years they found out that having a chrome bumper really does not help. I do not know I am not an automobile person, but kindly put up with my value judgment saying eventually everything now has been replaced with glass filled nylon or some new type of bumpers which have fantastic capability to absorb impacts. So, if the bumper uh, you buy some accident uh, or I will say I should not use any religious thing by some mishap you get into a crash. A lot of the impact is absorbed by the front plastic materials and then the beauty of this is now all type of sensors, cameras everything can come built into the plastic impact uh, taking devices. Next time you have a chance you go through various thing various uh, what do you call I expect no information sources and check how things have improved. Same thing has also happened a little in our electronic enclosures. So, whenever we have the corners of any I will give you an example of my mobile you have these corners it is just rounded, but also it is made with a special material which ensures that some small bumps it can take. And if you can go to our uh, these enclosures, you will see here that most of the things what you can think of they seem to be about the same among all the manufacturers. So, at this point now I will see if I can open one of these PDS uh, drawings. See here we would not have thought of too much of this detail, but several things which I have been talking of earlier are included in this these are inches. So, I expect no this whole thing is of the order of about an inch like a three quarters of an inch, but to make it look sleek to make it look sleek you have seen that about one third of the way up from the bottom a bulge has been given. It is not exactly in the middle it is counterintuitive. you can say if you can put it in the middle we could have made two identical parts even that variety is available, but in this case they have tried to include they have made this bulge a little at the bottom because hardware related to 
joining these two points together you see here we have four fasteners and then there is a top and bottom which will get fixed through the fasteners and then there is a place here for fixing your printed wiring board with all the circuitry. So, all you need today is probably look at the catalog and then see which one of them is suitable. So, this is a, as I said no 3 quarter inch and this across is uh, a 2 and half inch wide uh, what you call enclosure and length is around uh, 4 inches. So, this is typically a small thing which you can use for any of these small enclosures. You see one more thing is we have a 202 and 203. So, we have infrared and transparent and red panels which can be used for intercommunication. In case you want to make let us say two of the devices talk to each other you can buy one of these things and then you are in I will say you are ready to manufacture things. The absolute uh, reality of the material is again see here we have any detail you can think of is probably there okay, including non skid feet and you can keep on building on these enclosures as you like. So, I will take one of the things which uh, you know it is possible for you have seen this watertight handheld key oh, I am not able to understand what FOB means as we go along we will understand what it is. So, you see here now anything you can think of somebody has already thought about saying we make a small enclosure. So, good example I can think of is probably I am carrying it yes my car keys are with me. So, if you are to make some new concept for your car you have seen this ok. I am not very sure if actually this company themselves have made this. I do not think this company they in and in fact this is a not an original uh, remote control for my car. All of these are available probably if the remote control comes with the car, but then you are trying to make some other device at home including a remote to find where you have lost your remote or a really really universal remote which learns from every remote you have in the house by which you can control maybe the blinds or shades and then you can control probably your audio system or in my case I wish I found a remote which can control the gain of my hearing aid all at one go not yet made it is just a dream I am sure it can be made. So, you see things like this you can always go and then try to make use of this um, various types of enclosures and get your first button ready. So, you see here I will just try to make it a little bigger and uh, you can see the features they have listed here. Aha very interesting thing which we are looking for all along first thing is ergonomic design. So, ergonomic design obviously you know that you know how easy it is use, but then opposite also know how some of them should not be then otherwise the whole concept of a pocket call would not have come. You put it in your pocket and unwittingly some door should not be opened. So, various types of what do you call features built into it something number of buttons another you have seen here we have this coin cells. So, coin cell is something you know generally it is a it looks a little like your coin. 
So, generally the combination is uh, they will put, put the height and the diameter uh, to describe those things. So, 1020 I am sorry <laughs> uh, 2005 and 2010 refer to diameter they are all available up to 25 mm into 9 mm and so on. In the next stream right you have the pen torch cells you have the 4A, AAA, AA and then you have uh, half AA, 3 quarters AA and all sorts of combinations. And you see here something which I enjoy seeing saying button membrane seals the enclosure. What you see here is they may not be discrete buttons this whole thing may be a silicone pad on which the buttons stick out. And then you see here a small feature also is given so that in the darkness I can see which is the front which is the back and then I can also figure out which one to press like this. And after putting that membrane underneath and then if there is a lip underneath this groove and it is assembled and pressed together while it is not a fully submersible equipment it is halfway through. Mm, they have given IP66, is the IP66 does not mean uh, permanently you need it under the under water, but accidentally should it um, fall down a, a bundle uh, what do you call a pool or a puddle uh, in water nothing will happen. So, <coughs> advantage for us is you see here we have colors and we have printing they will give you anything you want. This is where no, I keep coming back saying obviously you have desktop enclosures, you have water type uh, uh, key uh, what do you call uh, boxes, then uh, a wall mount gang box meaning uh, you have some a lot of uh, you know things which you try to keep on the wall and slowly we are coming into water type hinged enclosures advantage of a watertight hinge enclosure is you put it on the wall and then you can open the cover and then you see here it, it has got a glass enclosure glass thing. So, you can still continue to have some indications and uh, some type and then full access to various things. You see here even very very interesting obviously things you know oh I wish I made it type of things. This of course, only a transportation case this I uh, will show you the sloping enclosure from other manufacturers. And then something which is very very interesting is a large number of accessories. How do you mount things and then can you have an access to an access card here and so on. This eastern radio uh, out of interest for the local uh, suppliers uh, I thought I would like to this is a supplier who supplies these things in India. Hey, I do not need to try that first time you remember. I gave you an exercise why do not you make a handheld meter start a cardboard box cut it and then try to put things and so on. Why make it? <coughs> you need to know what is the total pack available and all that. If you can go through the standard enclosure catalogs, you will see that miraculously these things seem to fit your requirements. See that. So, it is good 75 mm is about this much 3 digits wide. This is 3 inches otherwise. 75 millimeters. So, conveniently it can be held here nicely and then you see the length, length is about 147 that is a that is around 5 inches long. So, something which neatly sits and then you also have a <coughs> 1 and a quarter inch thick 32 mm height 
this is exactly what we wanted fine I mean life cannot be better than this you see here something else it has a beautiful place for putting your power supply. So, depending on what you would like to do it is possible for you to power it up using perhaps two pen, uh, double A cells and then probably you can even make them rechargeable if you have uh, necessary connectors and all. All that it needs now is a little bit of thought on where will you mount any of these your necessary hardware.